Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio here with a quick video on some tips to reduce computer eye strain. Now, I've included this as part of my Zoom tutorials playlist, but these tips are not really unique to Zoom, they apply to anybody using a computer for long periods of time. Obviously, due to the pandemic, we have a lot of people who are using Zoom for class and work and are therefore on a computer much more than they would be normally, which is why I'm making this video. So with that, let's jump right into it. Number one is very simple and does not require using any software. It's called the 20-20-20 rule. If you Google this, you will find plenty of articles explaining it in more detail. But the basic idea is that every 20 minutes, you should look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. This gives your eyes a chance to focus on something else instead of staring at a computer screen for an hour straight. The obvious problem with this is, especially if you are teaching online, you might need to build these breaks into your class for your students. If you're doing a lecture-heavy course with a lot of handwritten notes, students might be afraid to look away for that long because you could easily miss several lines of a derivation or something important. So it might be difficult, but set yourself little reminders or an alarm on your phone or something. Try to give the people in the meeting a break so they can look away. Number two, this is where we start getting into tweaking around some software settings, is to enable dark mode on your operating system. So this will be different for Mac or Linux, but I'll show you how to do it on Windows. Go down to your start menu, click the gear icon to go to settings, click on personalization, select colors, and then you will have a drop down menu where you can select light, dark, or custom, where you can then select different options for Windows and different programs. So notice how everything I have right now, these windows have a white background with black text on them. This kind of mimics what you would expect from a piece of paper, but this also makes your screen really bright. It's kind of just like staring at a light bulb. So if you switch this whole thing to dark mode, then Windows is going to change the background of these windows to black or dark gray, making your screen much darker, and then the light hitting your eyes is not as harsh. Now, there's a potential problem here. If you are a student or an employee who is using a school or work computer that is very locked down, so you do not have access to all of the system settings, you might not be able to turn this on. So it's something you can ask about, and if you're an administrator, consider enabling for your users. Number three is to look for dark mode in the settings for individual programs. So setting it for Windows overall may or may not affect other individual programs that are installed on your computer. For example, if you look at Microsoft Office products like Microsoft Word, by default, Word is pretty bright. Again, it's kind of replicating a piece of paper with a white background and black text. You can change that by clicking on the File menu in the upper left, go all the way down to Account, and then you will get a drop down menu for office theme where you can just tell it to use the default or sorry, use the same as the system. So if you have windows set to dark mode, then office is also going to use dark mode. But if you want to, you can also individually select different themes that will apply to office and can be different from what you have set for windows. Now, if you go back to the editing window, You'll see that that changed the menus in the background, but it didn't actually change the page. So supposedly in a future update, they might be changing this to actually make the page background dark as well. That doesn't work for me yet, but this still does kind of reduce your overall eye strain by reducing the amount of bright light coming from the borders of the screen here. Number four is to install a dark mode extension in your web browser. So for example, for a browser like Chrome or Firefox, even if I have dark mode enabled in Windows, that is just going to kind of change the toolbar and the address bar here to dark, but it doesn't affect the background of a page that is all white like Wikipedia or Google's homepage. To do that, there are plenty of third-party browser extensions or add-ons that you can install. For example, in Chrome here, I have installed one called Dark Reader that once installed gives you a little control up here in your toolbar. I can click on that and then turn it on on this website and it does a pretty good job changing everything to have a dark background. Depending on the colors on certain sites, it might make things up and mess things up and make them difficult to read, but there are some controls where you can toggle this on or off for individual websites. Number five is a simple one that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning. Simply turn down your monitor's brightness. This is usually done using buttons on the monitor, and I have set up a separate camera feed here because my screen recorder won't actually get this, but if you are using an external monitor, there's usually some menu buttons hidden somewhere that can be kind of annoying to navigate usually, but somewhere in here there will be a way to turn down the monitor's brightness. It's usually easier if you're on a laptop because then there are just keys on the keyboard that you can press to turn the brightness up and down just like you can with the volume. 
And unless you are outside in full sunlight, there's really no reason to have that brightness up at 100%. So go ahead and turn the brightness down. Don't make it so dim that you're kind of hurting your eyes in the other direction and you have to squint or get your face closer to read it. Make sure it's comfortable enough that you can read, but don't jack the brightness up all the way such that it's hurting your eyes. Number six, adjust the color temperature. Now this may be called different things depending on the device you're using, like night mode or on Windows, I believe it's night light or a blue light filter. Color temperature refer refers to the color of the screen in terms of whether it's more towards the warm yellowish end of the spectrum or more towards the cool bluish end of the spectrum. The cooler bluer light can hurt your eyes more and kind of disrupt your sleep patterns if you're looking at a screen too late at night. So this is something that you can adjust using those buttons on some monitors, but again, that interface is kind of clunky and annoying. Thankfully, there are some easy ways to do it in software now. I'll show you the built-in one on Windows first, and then next we'll talk about another tool. So on Windows, you again go down to your Start menu, click Settings, go to System, Display, and then right here you'll see this little button for Nightlight. So if you turn that on, Again, you're not going to see this on the screen recording, but you'll see it on the video feed where I have the camera aimed at the screen. So I actually have that kind of a little too extreme. It made the whole screen look almost kind of orange. So if you go down here to the nightlight settings, you'll see there's a slider for strength. So if I turn that all the way over to the left, then my screen looks much brighter and kind of more normalish in terms of the white balance. But if I swing this all the way over to the right, again, you can see as I'm going here, it starts to get yellower and yellower and yellower until I'm into this kind of extreme orange mode. So again, that, that's probably overdoing it, but you can set this whatever, again, makes it comfortable for you for reading. And you can also schedule this so it'll just turn on automatically at a certain time each day. So you don't have to remember to go in there and turn it on and off manually. One potential downside with this is if you are doing color sensitive work, like something in Photoshop, then you are messing with the colors you see on your monitor. So you might need to come in and turn this off if you're doing that type of work. Finally, there are some third party programs that will do the same thing and may offer more features. A very popular one is f.lux, which once you've installed runs in your taskbar and you can click down here to open it. And it just gives you some more features than the built in Windows tool has. So you can set a profile for the color temperature and how it will change throughout the day. If you wanna make an individual adjustment at any point, you can come in here and adjust this slider. And you can also disable it for certain amounts of times or for certain programs. So again, this is useful, especially if you're doing photo or video editing work. So for example, I might just disable that for an hour if I need to edit something. And then when I'm done editing and ready to go back, I just come in here and uncheck the disable box. So I think this way it's in the taskbar just makes it a little more accessible and easier to tweak than that Windows tool. But if you don't need that, then the built-in Windows tool might be fine for you. So there you go. This is by no means an exhaustive list. It is mostly a list of things that I have found to help personally and that I think will be useful for people who are now on Zoom for much of the day when you were previously maybe up getting around and walking between classes more instead of sitting at a computer. So if you have a question or maybe a suggestion, another tip you would like to add, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video so other viewers can see it. And if you haven't already, check out my giant playlist of other Zoom tutorials for both teaching and learning online with Zoom. I get most of my ideas for new videos from questions and comments on the existing tutorials. So if you do have another question or a suggestion for a tutorial about Zoom, I cannot promise that I will get to everything, but go ahead and leave a comment below this video and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you.